Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to have you joining us, whether it's live, as I'm, I'm doing this live uh, before you, or if you're uh, joining in a little later. I know a lot of you tune in to Table Talk uh, at your convenience uh, at the end of the workday or, or whatever time works for you that we appreciate it all. I do want to say another uh, thank you to those that uh, have mentioned even just today that uh, you've purchased this book, The Gospel Comes with a House Key, and you're working your way through it. That's a great encouragement to me. And uh, anyone out there, anyone else out there that's done the same, just let me know. Drop me an email or text and let me know that you're enjoying the book as well. It's a great encouragement. Uh, as you know, we've been uh, going through this. We're in Chapter 8 today. And Rosaria typically tells a story, sometimes more than one, uh, to make her point. And I wanted to start with my own story that relates to this chapter. Uh, it's a story from quite a few years ago, in fact, more than a couple of decades ago in Linda's and my life. And Linda had an opportunity to go to Japan. And that had been near and dear to her heart uh, for some time, more than a decade, even prior to that. Uh, sh her sister had planned to go uh, to Japan and uh, Linda was going to go with her. She had taken a couple of years of Japanese study in university to prepare language-wise. And then a little thing like our wedding got in the way and she wasn't able to go. And uh, so when her sister went back to Japan, this was uh, uh, I think 12 years after we were married, she went over to serve as a missionary for three years and, and when her sister did that, Linda certainly wanted to go and visit her sister. The only problem was we really didn't have money to, to go for that, uh, to do that. Uh, it wasn't money that we had in our budget. And we came up with this sort of uh, approach that um, we've used often in our life, in our marriage, and that is not to look at our bank account to see whether you should do something or not, but just to ask the Lord. And if the Lord says, yes, you should do it, you ought to do it, it's something I'm calling you to do, Instead of then uh, asking your bank account whether you can do it, you ask the Lord uh, whether you ought to do it. And then if he says yes and your bank account says no, then you get to work and, and you pray and, and you start to ask the Lord how. How are you going to make this work in my life? And, and the little phrase that we came up with, I think, at the time, maybe it wasn't the first time we did this, but I can remember it associated with this. And, and uh, Linda thought, well, what can I do? What can I do? And... She wasn't traveling the next day, so she didn't have to buy her ticket the next day. Uh, she did need a passport, though. I think this was one of the first things she did was to get her picture done for the passport, and she found a place that did it either complimentary or really, really cheaply. And that was, I think, the first thing she got done. And that just set in motion, uh, one, her obedience, that she was obedient to go when she felt the Lord was asking her to go and visit her sister. And a series of events then that, that sort of all fell into place, whereby all the practical things got taken care of, and yes, even the money, over a number of months, uh, got taken care of as well. So what can you do is a great principle to live by, rather than what can't you do. And, and I just thought of that because that's kind of the phrase I, I summarize this chapter by. Chapter 8 is called The Daily Grind the basics of hospitality and <clears throat> and I think it's a, a great reminder to us and to, uh, to start where you can start. This book, some of you have mentioned to me, those that have started making your way through it, it can be intimidating uh, because her hospitality is, is so ingrained in their lifestyle and it's so radical in so many ways uh, that it can be maybe a little bit uh, distancing or intimidating, one person said to me. But the encouraging thing is, and I'm encouraging you to just make a start somewhere. Try to learn the principle behind it rather than be intimidated by the facts on the ground in Rosaria's case. She starts with a story at the beginning of the chapter I'm not going to touch. I'll just mention it, that she was house-sitting for, uh, or cat-sitting, basically. Uh, a neighbor had gone away had two cats and she was going to kind of check on the house and, and take care of the cats. It reminded me of our own little incident with a dog sitting for a neighbor. We're not dog people at all, but 
we said yes just because we wanted to be good neighbors and it was a harrowing experience but uh, no time for that today I'm going to pick up on page 166 and read a couple of pages and and I'm going to cover I think two different vignettes that she's using to illustrate this concept of just starting where you can and she starts with a great statement this is about the middle of page 166 if you're following with me she writes that Christian hospitality cares for the things that our neighbors care about cares for the things that our neighbors care about and what if we could learn that I think we would go a long way toward breaking down barriers for one between us and our neighbors but also looking for ways that we can bring the gospel to bear into their lives even yes the very gospel by doing basic things like getting into their lives and their stories understanding what makes them tick and and how then can you serve them how can you connect with them you have to know people to be able to connect with them she goes on to say esteeming others more highly than ourselves means nothing less it means starting where you are and looking around for who needs you it means communicating Christian love in word and deed it means making yourself trustworthy enough to bear burdens of real life and real problems. That's a great paragraph in itself. And if we could learn those principles alone, we would serve others so much better than we do. My friend from church, Vicki, is a vibrant and engaging young mom. Her two daughters are five and two. When her family moved into a new neighborhood last year, she asked for prayer because she wanted to be hospitable. But with two young children, it's really hard to know where to start or how much you can commit to doing. So Vicki started doing what she likes to do, art and crafts and memorizing scripture set to song, and invited other mothers of young children in her neighborhood to join her. First, she invited the neighbors on her block to come over on Tuesday morning for stories and Bible memory. She handmade invitations and she and her daughters walked them around the cul-de-sac. That was it. The first Tuesday, one neighbor and her daughter came. The following week, she invited some on surrounding blocks and those on her cul-de-sac to come back. Each week, her gathering got bigger, and each week, she invited more neighbors to come. Walking and praying around the whole neighborhood with a double stroller was good exercise and gave her a good feel for the different houses and people who inhabited them. She now has about 15 mums and children who attend. After stories and games and scripture memory, the mums help one another by organizing grocery shopping and childcare trips for the week. Some of these mums are believers, others are not. A Tuesday morning scripture and song memory for kids has turned into an all-day neighbor helping neighbor day as after Bible songs and lunch, the women take turns going to Sprouts while others watch the children. And you know what? I would suggest that even beyond that, you know, maybe that was an hour, an hour and a half by intention of Bible reading and memory and, and, and child care, that then she says grew into a day long deal. But really, it becomes a seven day deal, doesn't it? Because you've got those connections and those go to. Uh, women in your lives if you're a woman or, or whatever a neighbor in your life that you are serving and they can serve you likewise and that can happen any day not just the one day she goes on to say vicky and i co-teach sunday school at our church we love dana dirksen's bible memory and catechism music vicky uses dana's music for her tuesday morning group which has become more than just a tuesday morning group the moms identify with dana and the gospel has become accessible and present to people. After a while, the mums in Vicky's Tuesday group wanted to learn more about Jesus. Vicky picked up Jen Wilkins' book, Women of the Word, and soon some of the mums started asking if they would get together and read some and pray for each other. This started to gain traction too. God was blessed. Uh, God was blessing the simple hospitality efforts of my friend, who was looking around and praying for the people there gathering them in close, and sharing the Word of God. And every Tuesday morning, I'm on my knees for Vicki and her mom friends. 
Lord knows, moms of small children need help. The enduring uh, help of the Word of God and of sisters in the Lord, locking arms together and drawing others to Him. I love that story in so many ways. Uh, you had a mom who is, you know, so easily she could restrict her life to, um, how do I want to say this? Or she would feel that she's limited in her outreach opportunities. And I can remember Linda thinking the same way. Uh, she was home at that point, uh, early in our marriage, only had one car in the family, and I was commuting. Uh, so I, I needed to take the car for work reasons. And so she's at home and raising children. And so she had to get creative in terms of her outreach. She has this burning desire to share Christ. And how does she do this? Well, she would do things like, Oh, the kids would do crafts and sell them as a business or or took up paper routes and it, it gave her an opportunity then go door to door with the kids to deliver these the local weekly paper um, flyers you know whatever it was different things that she would do to um, take a look at what she can do what she could do resource wise time wise location wise and just make the most of it and see what God would do and uh, so I love this uh, woman uh, who would did the same, Vicky, I think her name was, and uh, who just took stock of her life, of her gifts, and said, Lord, how can you use this? It's like the, the little boy with loaves and fishes and presenting it to the Lord, and the Lord makes much of it. And so it's a great story, and ho hopefully that encourages you too, to start wherever you are and do what you can. Uh, second story here. Just follows on straight after this. I'm on page 168. And uh, she talks of Donna, who came to me last summer and said, When I'm an old lady, I want to walk to a Bible study once a week. So I think we should start this sort of thing now. We live in a neighborhood with a couple of older women. Uh, oh, sorry, with a number of older women. So, so many that the cul-de-sac at the end of our block is called Widow's Corner. Donna is also the best Bible teacher I know, and I know some fancy good ones. Donna invited me and Sally to her house, and the three of us decided to divide up the parables of Jesus. Donna is not only an accomplished Bible teacher, she's also a great mentor and encourager. She wanted me and Sally to do our part, to use our own distinct voice and gifts, but not to forget our audience. We divided up the days and texts and the neighborhood Back Porch Bible Club was started. At the first meeting, we had five women. They knew each other only to say hello and to check on one another's gardens. Reading the Bible together is intimate business, and one of the first questions that Hazel had was this. If I disagree with everything you say, can I still talk? These were sweet little old southern ladies, the kind who get their hair done once a week. And they were also deep waters with hopes and fears and dreams and needs. Each week the group got bigger and warmer and soon our lives started to intertwine. We prayed for each other throughout the week. Sometimes we walked together in the morning. We set up a meal rotation for Beatrice when she had surgery. Over the years friendships have deepened. Some are believers and some are not. Some have been hurt and betrayed by the church, and this has taken a big toll. Others live alone and have benefited from having neighbors close at hand to check on them daily. This effort on Donna's part blessed us all. As Donna says, we also want to, uh, we want to walk to a Bible study when we're old. Donna did just what she does best. She is a great Bible teacher, and she is sensitive to the needs of older women in our neighborhood. She just opened her arms wide and drew others in. You know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a humorous way to, to be inspired to do something, but it's, you know, the wanting of uh, a Bible study you can walk to when you're an old lady, so you start one now. But it's a little bit like loving your neighbor as yourself, isn't it? And uh, Jesus commands us to do that. And I think sometimes that can be a good cue to us as to how we can serve others. Like, how do we enjoy being served ourselves? And how can I do that to somebody else? How can I sow that into somebody else's life? And so 
here she is starting something that she desires to have, you know, I don't know in how many years time, uh, but she's gone out and done something and she's used again. Uh, what can she do? Well, she's a good Bible teacher and she uh, has a, a passion for older women. And so she's serving God by using the very gifts that God gave her. And I want to suggest that uh, all of you have some kind of gift like that. Uh, Peter affirms this. If you go to 1 Peter chapter 4, we find that all of us are given gifts through which we serve each other. We do one another ministry by and through, and, and we thank the Lord in that and for that. And so find yours. And you know, don't be intimidated by the ways in which Rosaria and her family do hospitality. Be encouraged that she is using her gift, and you likewise can use your gift to serve others and see, um, I would say, even see miraculous things happen. And so many of us get discouraged in our evangelism too soon. I don't know if you noticed when I was reading that story of Donna, the years came up. Did you note that? The timeline being years. Rosaria mentioned that over the years these things have developed. And so how many times are we discouraged because you might invite somebody to, to um, you know, read the Bible with you or to, to do a, a church event or, or just you're trying to start even the, the discussion with a neighbor on things of the gospel and, and you seem to be shut down and 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 then you move on too quickly and sometimes uh, I think Andrew for instance has talked about playing that long game and it's not playing and it's not a game but it's it's um, it's that idea of having uh, um, trusting in the Lord that that sometimes uh, people are slow journey and slow bakes and what is your role in that time and he speaks for instance, of, of ministering to, to a friend over a number of years, and it's taken now you know, eight, nine years before, um, before we get to the point where there's real good now gospel conversations having, a real tenderness uh, to the things of God. And, and if he had given up uh, in the first week, we, he wouldn't have gotten to year eight or nine when, when these sorts of things are happening. So, so again, be encouraged by that. Um, I'm not going to go much further than that today. I think we're almost at, yeah, we're at nearly 20 minutes. It always, time always flies. Uh, but again, those are two examples of people that just looked at their lives, looked at what God had given them as gifts, and looked at need around them. All of us can do that. Where can you start? What can you do? And that's a great place uh, from which to launch hospitality in your life as well. Tune in tomorrow as uh, Andrew picks up the Psalms again. Thank you for joining me today, whether it's live or a little later. Uh, we do appreciate it. Again, let me know if you've gotten this book and are enjoying it, challenged by it, encouraged by it. If you have a question, let me know. In the meantime, God bless.